All right, folks, so in today's video, we're going to take a look at bandpass filters for amateur radio. Here are two bandpass filters that I happen to have sitting here. Let's take a quick look at these. So it's labeled bandpass filter, so you know what it is. And it has a uh, transmission side and an antenna side, and I should say transceiver side. So that means that you would put the output of your radio here on your bandpass filter, and then you would connect this to your antenna. Now, when you connect these up, it's typically radio, bandpass filter, amplifier, tuner. That's the uh, sequence of events that you want to set up there. Um, if you don't have an amplifier, you would go radio, you would go bandpass filter, and then you would go tuner. And that's how you would do that. Uh, if you take a look at these, there's some more information on here. And I don't know exactly what this says, but we could probably uh, make some guesses. So this first one here is probably bandwidth. So that tells you how wide it is. We're going to hook these up to a spectrum analyzer, and we'll be able to measure this and test it and see what it looks like. Um, this is probably power level, 200 watts. I don't know if I would run 200 watts digital through this, but 200 watts single sideband is probably fine. Then um, we have this negative 1.5. That's probably SWR. And then this one down here is probably the insertion loss. So you probably lose about a half a dB of your signal strength when you go through this. Uh, it has SO239 connectors on either side. And it is screwed together in this aluminum extruded housing. And we're going to take this apart so we can see the guts and uh, what it looks like. But uh, they're very simple devices. And then they also have these mounting brackets. So if you wanted to mount these on a board or a box or a wall or something like that, then you could do that as well. We have one for the 20 meter band designated here by 14 megahertz. And then here is one for the 40 meter band designated by 7 megahertz. And then we have the same information down here. These come in a variety of frequencies. So I just uh, picked up the 20 and the 40 meters. Uh, there's 30, 15, 17, I believe, 12, and 10. I'll have links to all of this down below and you can check them out if you want. And these are really moderately priced. Um, they are, they're about 40 bucks at the top end. I think some of the, some of the, um, more popular ones, like a 20 meter one, they have, these probably have higher demand. So they're a little bit cheaper. Anyhow, I'll have links below and you can check them out. Now, before we get too far down the road, what I wanted to say is that I was contacted by AliExpress and they asked if I would review these filters. And of course I said, yes, because I love reviewing filters. Uh, so they sent these to me free of charge in exchange for this video review. If you're the type of person who doesn't like sponsored content on YouTube and you find it triggering, you may want to go watch some CAD videos. Empower your electronics journey with PCBWay.com. From high quality PCB manufacturing and assembly to unbeatable value, PCBWay is committed to fueling your innovation. Expect quick turnaround times, dependable worldwide shipping, and expert support at every step with PCBWay.com. Whether you're refining your first prototype or gearing up for full-scale production, PCBWay.com helps bring your ideas to life affordably and efficiently. Visit PCBWay.com today and experience true excellence in PCB solutions. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about what is a bandpass filter. And a bandpass filter, sometimes referred to as a BPF for ham radio, is a specialized electronic component or circuit designed to accept signals within a specific range of frequencies called the pass band. And it strongly attenuates signals outside of that range. It acts like a gatekeeper for radio signals in that it passes or allows signals in a particular frequency band to continue down the signal chain relatively unimpeded while it filters out unwanted signals that are too low or too high in frequency. A bandpass filter for ham radio is useful for ensuring clean, interference-free operation with designated amateur bands. A bandpass filter for ham radio is useful for ensuring clean, interference-free operation within designated amateur bands. By selectively allowing only the chosen band's frequencies to pass through and rejecting frequencies above or below, these filters help maintain signal fidelity, improve reception quality, and keep transmissions compliant and interference-free. A really popular use for these things are at events like field day or winter field day, where you have a bunch of operators operating radios on different bands. What will happen sometimes is that the strength of these signals will interfere with your station, causing interference, high noise floor, and noise in general. By using something like a bandpass filter, 
you remove that obstacle from your operations. So if you want to get more info, I would uh, suggest that you go take a look at an article that was published in QST. And the article is called Bandpass Filters for HF Transceivers. And it is a DIY guide that we've actually used on this channel. And I'll have a playlist below where I've built various bandpass filters using this article. Anyhow, I just wanted to recognize Lou Gordon, who wrote this article, K4VX. And this is a diagram from that article that I pulled out. So you can see that these are very simple devices. And this is a simple bandpass filter. It's what we refer to as a three-pole filter that really has three uh, circuits inside of it. And you can see those uh, designated with C1 and L1. On the left-hand side, so that would be a capacitor and an inductor for position one or pole one. Then you have uh, inductor two and capacitor two for position two, and then a capacitor and inductor for position three. And as I mentioned, this is the QST article that was originally published in September of 1988, and it's freely available on the internet. Okay, I've taken a few minutes to disassemble this bandpass filter, and there's a couple of different things I wanna talk about. The first one is this particular circuit is a little loose and it's a little wobbly and you can actually hear that move around if you shake it a little bit and uh, what I would probably do if I was going to continue using these long term the reason I'm not committing to that is because we haven't tested it on the scope yet but we will I would worry about this moving around and I would worry about potentially having a solder break here or on the other side where it connects to the board I think that might be a little bit of a challenge you can kind of hear it. I don't know if my mic's picking that up. Uh, when I got this and I took it apart, it had this piece of foam in here to kind of hold everything steady. Not really a problem. Uh, these things probably get warm, and I don't necessarily know if this foam is something that I'd want to have in there long term. It looks like you could take these bottom screws off, and that would remove this bottom plate. And you could probably run a zip tie through here, although that would be a tight fit. Uh, and that would hold it a little bit more secure, or you could hot glue it up. Now, if I did something like hot glue in this thing up to make this a little bit more stable, I probably would want to use a hot glue that is effective in warm or hot temperatures because I wouldn't want it to melt and make a big mess in here. But uh, you can see that we have attenuators. I'm sorry, you can see that we have inductors and capacitors. Here's one, here's a little teeny capacitor. Here's one. And then you can see this one up here. And that would complete the design of the circuit. As I mentioned, they're relatively simple. This is one I built using that article. You can see the inductors and capacitors on here. Um, they're not overly difficult to build. They are challenging to tune to your particular passband that you want to be uh, using. So that's a little bit of a challenge. Uh, if you don't want to go the DIY route, these kits, especially at 40 bucks for the more expensive ones, certainly is a, is a viable option but uh, let's throw these things on a scope and see what happens okay i originally said we were going to connect to a spectrum analyzer but we're going to actually use a nano vna so folks at home can play if they have a nano vna and what we have here is a two port measurement and we really want to pay attention to this blue line it's an s21 log mag calculation that will allow us to measure attenuation or loss I'm going to pull this up on a computer screen so it's significantly easier to read. And right now it's getting some interference with stuff that's on the desk. So we'll get all that sorted out as well. But uh, basically what we're doing out of the top port or the S11 port is that we are squirting a signal out. That signal is going into our bandpass filter on the transmit side. It's going through the filter and then it's coming out the antenna side where this cable here connects it back into the, the nano VNA. And what the nano VNA does is it takes a known signal, sends it through the filter, and then characterizes the output here on the screen. Pretty simple stuff, but you do need a two port device like a nano VNA or a spectrum analyzer with a tracking generator in order to make these types of measurements. Okay, so we have nano VNA saver pulled up and we have our nano VNA connected to our computer. And we did a sweep from 12 to 20 megahertz. And I did that because I wanted to get a large span of frequency so we could see how this device behaves. This is our 20 meter band pass filter. And we set this for 20 sweeps at 101 points. So that gives us 2,020 data points across our sweep. So this gray bar in the middle of the screen, this is the 20 meter band. And you can see down here, this is our SWR 
uh, going through this device because I wanted to measure that. So if I take our marker and I move it over here to the highest point in the 20 meter band, we're at an SWR of 1 to 1.192, which is pretty good. And it's in uh, specification of the device as advertised. So we're pretty happy with that. Uh, what I want to do now is I'm going to go over to display setup and I'm going to change this from an SWR to an S21 gain. And that's that through measurement that we had spoke about previously. So when we take a look at this, we'll be able to take a look at how much loss that we have and our roll offs. So these shoulders where the sweep goes down is considered your roll off and is typically at a 3 dB level. And so you can see here, let's see our, our lowest uh, point, which is the, the most amount of loss that we get in the 20 meter band, which coincides with our highest SWR reading. We are at 0.566 dB of loss, which is in spec, I would say, with the rating. So we're pretty happy with that. Now with the Nano VNA, one of the things that we can do is we can actually characterize this filter. So let's go ahead and do that now. And I'm gonna do that by clicking down here on this analysis button. So I'm gonna hit that. And it's going to say analysis type right now it's set for low pass filter but we're going to set it for band pass filter and then we are going to click here for run analysis <clears throat> and so it's telling us our center frequency for this is uh at 14.4244 uh, which is actually just a little bit above the band and then it's going to tell us our bandwidth at negative 3 db and we spoke about that we're looking at around 3.5 megahertz of bandwidth so if that run one rating was correct on the filter, this is a little bit wider than that. Quality factor is 4.02 and our bandwidth at a negative 6 dB is 4.34. But you can see there is no other hand bands here. So you should be okay using this at something like field day or winter field day. Pretty happy with it and uh, not gonna complain. Let's set up and test the 40 meter or seven megahertz bandpass filter and see if we get similar results. Okay, and we're back, and this particular sweep is from 5 megahertz to 10 megahertz, and it is 20 sweeps. Gives us a total of 2,020 data points. This gray bar in the middle is, it's our 40 meter band or 7 megahertz. And what I can do here is move this marker to our highest SWR in that band. Okay, and if we take a look at our SWR up here, we can see that it is 1 to 1 1.456, which is in specification for the device. So no complaints or anything there. Let's take a look at the S21 measurement. And you can see that our highest point here is coincides with our lowest SWR. So we want to go over here to take a look. And what we see is a loss of 0.741 in terms of dB. And I think on the device it said 0.5 dB. So it's a little bit high there. Over here, let's see what we have. It's a 0.653. I'm not particularly upset by that. I kind of kind of expected that with the cables and the connectors and all that kind of stuff. And it's probably what you would see in a real world scenario. Let's go ahead and run our analysis. So when we run that, the center frequency for the filter is 7.25, which is within the band. Now if we take a look at our bandwidth, it says it's 1.8. If I take a look at the device, which is what I'm doing right now, it says it's at 1.2. So it's a little bit higher there, just like the other bandpass filter. Quality factor of 3.95. The bandwidth is 6 dB is 2.22 megahertz. All in all, I'm going to give these things a pass, and I'm going to say that they should work as expected. I'm actually getting ready to send these off to a buddy who requested them. He wanted to test them out at Winter Field Day, so we'll see how he does. And if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, as always, post them below, and I'll do my best to respond. Thank you for watching.